Kirk, obviously uh, some of the leaders like Tomas Evans, for example, had a very good game tonight, but it still wasn't enough to uh, get over the hump in the end, which is the main goal. What was your assessment of t what today's game? Decent first. Again, we didn't do our jobs in a couple areas in the second period. Ends up in the back of our net when really, again, nothing happened. Great job by Ebbs' line to get us back within one. Completely dominated the third period. <laughs> like They barely touched the puck. That probably had a better view, but I thought that was offside on the game-winning goal. But at the end of the day, we should have got a whistle in the ozone. We all stopped playing. Goes down, dump. Goalie's not paying attention. Score from the corner behind the goal line. Game over. That's it, right? Like, we're not mentally engaged there for the last 30 seconds. And um, by all six guys, right, on both sides of it, where maybe that that, we're not, that play literally doesn't happen. It's a face-off. If we go to the net and stop there, we don't. You know, you know we're just not ready. The puck goes in from the corner. So that's... Uh, Really disappointing because they, they deserved their effort for most of the game. They deserved a better fate, I thought. So I know they're tired, uh, but you know, got to find a way. And then in the second period, um, there was a little lull where we weren't able to get a lot of shots on there. I know we talked about a struggling middle frame at times before. Did you think that struggle in the middle would kind of play a negative to the end result, even though the third was really strong? Yeah, I mean, it was just. There's a little frustration there again, like you're tired. I, I, they didn't play all week. This is again our fourth game in five, five days, days, which yeah. is absurd, um, you know. And uh, and that's on the league. Like it's unfair to the players when Norfolk sat in, at home for s five days, and you know. But at the same time, nobody's feeling sorry for us. Like every day, you know, every team in our division is basically playing eight and ten or nine and twelve this this week. So. We're all we're all eating it, so you got to find ways. Um, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. And when you have a record that we have, you have to expect the other teams are going to come with their best effort every day. Because whether you're in first place or last place, they still get a paycheck every two weeks too, and they you know they they probably want to they probably want to win the game as well. So uh, you know it's disappointing because you know we deserved a better fate tonight, um, but. We got to find a way to come out tomorrow and be better. Find a way to win tomorrow. That's it. Uh, Coach, obviously, one positive. It seems like Will McKinnon, even early in his career, you're putting more things on him each day. Can you speak to how he's been able to really ingratiate himself quickly into this uh, locker room and team? Yeah, well, lots of opportunity with some four guys, right? Um, uh, yeah, he, he's getting better. He took a little bit of a step back tonight, just. Again, four games in five nights. He hasn't done that ever. So, um, well, you know, welcome to the jungle, kid. Um, as Pat knows over there, um, uh, it's uh, you know, those are the games you learn as a pro to manage it a bit. And uh, he had a couple again. He had a couple turnovers there uh, early, soft plays. But as the game went on, you, you got better. And it's just you know, you got to find a way to get through those and, and manage them. And uh, your first one's a little bit shell shocked. Uh, I remember mine out of school and. The coach literally, I, I lose a train wreck. I was like minus three, and the coach just wasn't even mad. He just laughed at me. Uh, he's like, you know, welcome to pro hockey. And, uh, the, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, he, he's going to keep getting better, and these are these are important games for guys like that just to learn. Um, like I said, like, we, we, defending, we really were fine. Like, nothing happened. Uh, you know, their goal was a point shot that hit some bodies. Um, Again, their scoring chances were either on the special team, on the power play, or when we were short, or when we had a power play, or they had a power play. Like we don't really give up much five on five. You know, got to hold our breath sometimes. When we have the power play, whether they're going to score or not these days. But again, five on five, nothing happens really. And uh, it's credit to those D and guys have stepped up who haven't played a lot of minutes this year. Um, you know, will include it as a as a young buck. You know, so uh, uh, he's, it, we keep saying it, but he's going to keep getting better every game. And then Kirk Cup, uh, he was in there in the final couple minutes of the game. So obviously that's a huge vote of confidence for a kid in his first few games. He seemed to play with good speed and poise to his game. Uh, what is your assessment of uh, assessment of his first couple games here? Yeah, really good. Uh, great habits, great on faceoffs. Um, you know, we'll keep working him in probably more responsibility as we get going. But 
you know, he's got some power play looks here the last two games, six on five play. Um, great on the wall, like his body positioning, like he's a hockey player, like kind of, he's old school a little bit, like, you know, nothing really flashy. I, I think offensively it's going to come, you know, a little bit Corey Mackin-esque uh, where it comes in and he has some chances, but it's just the game's a little bit faster than college, just a little bit stuff in the scoring area. It might close down a little quicker, but he, that stuff's going to take care of itself, I think. Uh, but on the defensive side and the way he possesses pucks, like he's it's outstanding. Like he looks like a pro. Do you have a question? Yeah, um, this is your last non-conference game of the season. The rest of the maybe 10 or so games left are really big games because you really need to win for seeding sake, for clinching sake in the playoffs. What's your game plan there? Win. Um, you ever been to St. John's, Newfoundland? Yeah, it's a long ways, right? If you have to play them in the playoffs and you don't have home ice, that's uh, that's a uh, flight to Toronto and then three and a half hour flight north uh, twice in 12 days. So uh, yeah, we got to win. And uh, I think they're down actually, uh, Hayden Levine uh, just let in four in the first period to Maine. So they're down four one. So um, at least we're getting some help in that aspect, but we need to be in first place, I think, um, you know, uh, to me, yeah, they're divisional games, but we don't play Newfoundland, so like we need to win these games. Uh, Tuar, Bear, Maine, Worcester—they're they're not going to catch us, but we need to we need to get these games and, and take care of business here and and get home ice through the first two rounds of the playoffs and um, you know hopefully you know maintain first place in the conference. So it's huge. Like I, I really believe you probably need to win seven of these games of the eleven minimum uh, uh, to to keep first place and. You know, it'd be nice to find a way to get first place overall in the league, but um, more importantly, we need first place in, in the conference. Very nice. And then for tomorrow, coach with three and three, uh, obviously Logan came back today. You gonna go with him again, or? Uh, I, I mean, the plan was originally, but uh, at the same time, we gotta play guys based on performance. So uh, we'll think about uh, who's gonna start tomorrow, and we got lots of time tonight to think about it. Right, thanks, Kurt. All right, guys.